Kwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It's so good to see you in the house today. Karibuni sana and thank you for coming to church. We bless the Lord for you. If you're a visitor for the very first time, we're going to be inviting you officially. But this one is also for you. We want to say karibu sana. Welcome to the Shiloh Worship Center, a place. Come on, wenyeji wenzangu jamani. Welcome to Shiloh Worship Center, a place. This is a place of breakthrough. Read with me or follow through that we may move together. Jesus counsels the rich young ruler. It says, now behold, one came to him and said, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He says to him, which ones? Jesus said, 18, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man, 20, said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, 21, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But the young man, when the young man heard what he said, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. Verse 23, then Jesus turned and said to his disciples, assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. 24, and again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. 25, when the disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? 26, but Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. 27, then Peter answered and said to him, see, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? 28, so Jesus said to them, assuredly again, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. 29, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit eternal life. Verse 30, but many who are first will be last and the last first. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Today we want to share on a topic, my working title has been what about us? What about us or what's in it for us? That's what we want to try and look at today. The setting that we have here is Jesus doing his teachings while he's doing his about three and a half year ministry in the earth. All right. Jesus has been in the earth. He's done a couple of things. He's done many, many things. By this time, he has grown up. Um, he has gone to the temple. He has taught. By this time, he has his disciples. He's teaching. By this time, he has healed the sick and done great and mighty things. In fact, by the time he's coming here, he's headed towards Jerusalem and towards his death. Okay, so right towards the end of what is his ministry right here. By this time, he has taught on many, many, many things. He has taught on many things that the um, Pharisees and the teachers of the law found to be very, very controversial. By this time, there are already people who are seeking to kill him, who are plotting to have his life. By this time, Jesus has done the things that Jesus had come to do. But the one thing, he has not yet taken the cross for you and I. So Jesus is well about his ministry. And this is where we find our setting today. When we are coming to um, verse, uh, chapter 19, which is where we read, he's teaching to them about something that's very tricky that we keep going back to, especially in our society today. He's teaching about marriage and divorce. And he says many things that are not the focus of our study today, but please go back to them because they are helpful to your own personal life. He teaches also about celibacy and teaches that those who would like to be eunuchs would continue to do the same. He says those people who don't feel like they've been called to, be, to marry, they should go ahead and do the same and just let people be in the first service, Pastor Hilary Sadika really came at the young people and commanded in the name of Jesus that marriages must be had in Shiloh. Vijana wenzangu mlio hapa kwa kweli mmesikia ujumbe huwa wa mungu. Kama uku kuwa ina kuhusu pia ni yako kwa kweli. Asante. Thank you. We must share the burden. We must share it together. 
All right. So he also speaks and blesses the little children, just bringing you to where Jesus is by the time we're getting to this today. And then we come to the story, which we, most of us know about the young, rich ruler. All the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, talk about this man. They tell us that he was rich. Matthew tells us that he was young, and Luke tells us that he was a ruler. So we are looking at these ones, and these are three people, okay? It's the same person with these three characteristics, okay? So Matthew might have missed out on, on many other things. All of them got that he was rich. Semi-rich. Yes, all of them had got that he was rich. Matthew got that together with being rich, he was young. One as few young people in the house. Young and rich. Muko pamoja. Ayabas. And then Luke got that he was a ruler also. So we put all these people together and he's the rich, young. He was an influential person because he was a ruler. He was wealthy. Uh, he was rich. And he was young. Miaka yake haiko imesonga. Chumvi alio kuwa meibogia haiko nyingi sana. Sawa sawa. The rich, young ruler. This is the man that comes to Jesus. He comes to Jesus while he's in the middle of his teaching, interrupts a lot of the things that are happening around there, and asks a question. It says, Behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? I want you to remember that we have said this man was young, and he was rich, and he was a ruler. Okay? So young might not be very, very heavy for you in this moment, but he was rich, and he was a ruler. He was influential, and those titles back in the day were not just titles. Those people were people. If you are rich, if the Bible actually records that you are rich, they had observed and seen ulikuwa na kakiru. So this man already had more than what most people usually have. He had a lot of things in his life. So life yake ilikuwa na content. But there was one thing that made him sleep and wake up and sleep and toss and turn when he couldn't find sleep. And this is what he brought to Jesus, eternal life. Even having all those things, there's still one thing that he felt his life was still incomplete without. He desired eternal life. He was not alone because a lot of us in this house today think about eternal life as well. We think about what will life look like. In fact, if you're here, you're born again. One of the reasons, might not have been the main reason, but one of the reasons you gave your life to Jesus must have been because someday you thought about eternity and you decided to secure your place in the future. It doesn't sound like a very spiritual reason to give your life to him. You know, everybody wants, I, I considered the love of Jesus at Calvary. That's great. But also, we are in this place. To me, but you, are, you have a place. You have a sure, one of my friends like to say, you have a sure thing in Christ. Hallelujah. So this man, just like all of us, desired something, something that, that um, could not be given by the wealth he had or by the influence of leadership that he had. So he comes to Jesus Christ to ask about eternal life. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. If you want to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. I want you to follow the train of thought that Jesus has because it's very important. He said to him, the young man says to him, which ones? And Jesus begins to line out these things. He tells him, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not do this, you shall not do the other. He lines out all those things that we know. The Ten Commandments, okay? So he lines out those things that have to do with man. The relation. You know, in the, in the table of the um, commandments, there's those ones that have to do with you and God, your personal relationship with God. And then there's the other half, the other table that has to do with your relations, you and man. Yeah? So like the ones that talk about um, you shall have no other God but me, you shall not have any, I other, any idols, those ones are you and God. And then these ones, love your neighbor, do not kill, do not steal, honor your father and your mother, those ones are between you and man. They are to help you with your relations, your everyday ordinary life. So Jesus mentions those things about him and the people around, okay? You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Because that question itself lets you know that this man knew he lacked something. He asks Jesus, What do I still lack? Just like many of us in the house today, you think about many questions and you have many things. I don't know whether you are like me, that you have ever desired something. When you didn't have it, you thought that that was the thing you needed to complete your life. And then you got it. And then you realize that there is still some space in your heart for more. Have you ever prayed for a job? Have you ever trusted God for work? 
and cried out to God. Na sayo mambo magumu mazito. In that moment you're even telling God, God, you don't have to match my previous salary. Whatever you give me, mtu ananipea tu kitu yoyote, I shall take it. Have you made such a prayer? Wengine amjafanya hiyo maombi. Aujafika hapo pa kusukumwa, usifike hapo kwa jina la Yesu. I have been in that place before and I was just crying out to God and saying God remember mercy whatever you will give me whatever <laughs> I shall take it and God is faithful anakupatia nini whatever ukikaa na whatever one month una realize whatever yezi fanya zile vitu zote unataka kufanyanga whatever yezi kuendeleza kufika hiyo kiwango ingine. but you had cried out for it when I was praying in that moment I thought that one thing will complete my life have you prayed for a spouse and gotten them? I haven't yet. But have you? Umeombea spouse na ukampata. Alafu ukiomba unakumbuka vinyo ulikuwa unaomba. You are asking God, God, if you shoot me with the bone of my bones. You know you're praying those West African prayers. Hang me with the bone of my bones. Such violence. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you make that prayer and you're thinking this person will come to complete your life. Then the person comes. Vumilia moyo wangu. Majaribu ni kama unapitia mambo magumu kwa kweli. Have you ever trusted God even when even for health you are unwell for a season and then you trust God for healing and you're like when this healing comes I shall never even come to ask for anything. God when you heal me my song will only be the one you heal has come to earth. and then you receive your healing. 2 months down the line you remember now that you're healthy you are required to still bring something on the table. And you don't have that something. In fact, you don't even have the table. <laughs> so this rich young ruler, or yes, this rich young ruler, had gotten to a point such as that. He had the influence. He had the wealth. But there was something missing. And it was just, I, I am missing something. And I can't quite put my finger on what is missing. So I go to the master, just like many of us. And so he goes and asks Jesus. And Jesus says to him, no, this is what you need to do. Keep the commandments. Because you see, when he presents the requirement, to Je with the question, he's coming to tell Jesus, what must I do? In that moment, he believes that something must be done. I must do do something. You see this young man who has gotten wealth, who is a leader, has gotten used to a system of doing so that you get. So you think even for eternal life, I must do so that I So Jesus, following his train of thought, says to him, ah, okay, just keep the commandments. You want to do. If you want to be saved by keeping, by doing something, then you must do these commandments and do them to the fullest which none of us can be able to do. But the young man has found a loophole in the system, says to Jesus, I have done that. I've been doing it since my youth. So, yeah. But there's still lack something lacking. And so Jesus says to him, ah, is that so? So he brings him now from that place of thinking, you must do something to get eternal life, to the place that something has already been done. We're going to see it in just a minute. He says to him, listen. Jesus says to him, 21, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. The next line says, when the young man heard that, he went away sorrowful, for he had, come on, say it with me, for he had. So he came wanting to do something, because the things he was doing, he was wondering why they are not. He just wanted to make sure, are these things going to assure me of my place? Are they going to assure me? Am I, have I booked my place enough? And Jesus says, more to that, there's still something. You have to sell away your possessions and come and follow me. So the young man is like, um, yeah, I'm a watcher to know your story. That's quite serious anyway. So walks away, um, goes away. The Bible says he walks away sorrowful because he had great possessions. You see, the fact that he was still dissatisfied, just to take us a little bit back, the fact that he was still dissatisfied even though he seemingly had everything that we look forward to is telling of a lot about the quality of our lives as believers. That it is possible to have everything that you want but still not to have everything. Because there is a gap, and I'm sure you've had this many times before, there is a gap in the heart of a man that only God can plug. Only God can truly fill. 
only God can truly satisfy. That's the reason we still come to church every morning. Whether you made great profit in the week or not, you still will come to the place of God. You still will reach out to God because there is a place inside of every person that only God can plug. That's why everybody desires, even the people that are not believers, by the way, have the thought of eternity. Somewhere in the back of their minds, you have the thought of eternity. That's why you will hear many people saying that siku moja, si leo, lakini siku moja, mtu akoke. Akakwambia, siku moja itakuja, tunitua koka. Because that I am a joke, kuna kitu ile in lazim, kuna mali, kuna endagua. Na yo siku ikifika, nitakuwa ready. But that is the lie that the enemy throws at us to, to keep us in the place of delay. Thinking that God owes you tomorrow. Thinking that tomorrow is promised. Bwana iso sefiwe. So let's continue with the thought of Jesus. So Jesus has said to him that if you want um, to be perfect, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and then you will have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. Jesus told him that he has to do something. Sell everything and give whatever he has. And that statement in itself and the reaction of the man exposes the, with the weakness of this man. The fact that this man goes away is enough for him, shows, is enough to show us that the place that he had in his heart for his wealth and his possession was higher than the place that he had for the eternal life that he really wanted. If you're asking for something from Jesus, it is because you want it so badly that if he tells you do this so that you can get it, you're ready to do. He was okay to do those things that were just easy to do kidogo, 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 kupenda watu, love my neighbor, not commit adultery. That's what I can do. But then Jesus goes to the place of his heart's weakness. I don't know whether you've read the Bible and the Bible has exposed something in your heart and you're like, Nikai Bible study ya leo imeishi hapo. Ama ulikuwa unasoma a portion of scripture and then unasoma soma hapo chini una realize eh wacha yangu iishi hapa juu. Hii nitakuja kuendeleza kesho. When the Lord exposes our hearts and that's a beautiful place. That's why that's why we need to that's why we need to open ourselves up to God. Nasema sasa chiki. This is now real business. This is now where we are moving. This is now why we have come. This is the reason why Jesus came. It's good to everybody desires. We all desire to have nice conversations that leave us feeling warm. We all desire Jesus in our quiet place to touch us in the back, pat us and tell us, you're doing good, my son. My daughter, keep on praying, keep on praying. But there are some times that the Lord will come and tell you what you're doing is not a good thing. Or the times that the Lord will come and require of you a sacrifice, and I'm not talking about money, a sacrifice of your life that you quite haven't begun to collect Kwani hakuna mtu aliniambia utaitisha hizi vitu kubwa because the young man is coming ready for whatever answer he's like what what more what more i'm still doing all these things what am i lacking and jesus says to him go and sell your possession exposing the weakness that this man has in his heart which might be a lot um, we might we might think that or we might find that we have a lot in common with this young man now the question that you might be asking yourself from what we are reading today is should all believers then sell their property so that they can get what it is? Are you asking that question like me? Sema ukweli, ambia jirani yako ukweli. Unajiuliza, so u pasta anaelekea wapi kwa sababu kama hata tuambia leo tulete manini zetu hapa nilikuwa najua tu kuna kitu nilijua tu kuna shida mahali that's not what Jesus is calling us to do. Just recently, and we shared it in this service as well, when we were doing that series in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, one of the things that Paul is calling the church there to do that we can borrow a leaf from is to aspire to work with our own hands. It is a blessed practice for every believer to work with their own hands. Because we have people who um, we care for. We have people who we have to attend to. We have people who have needs that we have to attend to. We have people who depend on us. So we must work with our hands. Anybody that is coming and telling you you need to stop doing what you're doing, you need to stop working with your hands, that person, you need to sit down with them properly and ask them a few questions. Kwa sababu hakulishi. Unajua ni kuja ni kwambie, cheki, wacha kufanya zile vitu nafanya, ndako wana kulisha, ndako wana kuvisha, ndako wana ku... You know, that, that is a different conversation. Namu namu nagani. But I have met ladies young ladies who cannot just be comfortable with the life of just sitting in the house. People who say, I must have meaningful work in my hands. 
Sawa unanilisha, unanivisha, unaninywesha na zile vitu zingine zenye watu wanafanywangwa. But I must I must do something with my hands. Nikae tu. So that is not the call that we are being given. So the call that Jesus is, 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 is placing on us, so that you are not a burden to others, so that you are not now saying, sasa tuliambiwa shailo kanisani, tuwachane na kila kitu, so nimeuza gari, nimeuza nyumba, hasa tuko huku tutu na mtegemea mokozi. My brother, my brother, service ikiisha unakimbiza kila, my brother. So mi nilifanya, I am a doer of the word. So nilifanya vile tuliambiwa tufanya saa, ina, kuna nafasi naeza lala kwako siku mbili alafu. That's not what we are calling each other to do. We should, however, be willing to do, this is what Jesus is calling us to do, just like he's calling the young, rich ruler. We should be, however, willing to do whatever it is that God is asking us to do. So that this kind of attitude will not allow anything to stand between us and God. You see, at the encounter, I remember Bishop one time asking us, when you consider everything that Jesus has done for you at Calvary, which we were remembering and commemorating today, what then is too big that you're not willing to release for him? You see, the question of Jesus exposes that this man, even though he had kept all these um, commandments between him and man, exposed that in his heart he had regarded his wealth more than God. And that is what the first table of the, um, of the commandments is about. That he had made these things his idol. These things were more expensive to him, more important to him than the eternal life that he was looking towards. The question we must pose to ask ourselves then must be this. Is, could it be that I have things that I am holding on to so heavily, so tightly, that when God asks me to release just so that he can have his way, I'd rather walk away. That's the question. That it would call us to introspection and ask ourselves, ni nini hiyo enyeneza kuwa nimeshikilia sana? And Jesus is going to continue carrying this thought. We're going to see it in just a minute. In just a minute. But the principle throughout this remains this. That God may challenge and require us as individuals to give something up for the sake of his kingdom. So that he still, uh, that he still allows somebody else to have. This is what we are saying. That kuna vitu mungu waneza akakuitisha wewe kwa sababu wewe umeziweka kwa roho yako kama tumiungu tudogo. Lakini anarusu watu wengine wakue nazo kwa sababu wa watu wajazishkilia. These things are not sinful things. Because sometimes the very blessing of God can be the idol, can be the thing that keeps you away from the table of the Lord. If you read the story of the Bible in, in is it Luke chapter 14, the story about um, the great banquet, and we've shared it before, that um, when the master has sent out invitations and told people come and eat on this day and this day, and the people confirm their attendance. And then on the day of the event, the master sends out his servant, and the servant goes out and calls the people who had already RSVP'd. And they come and they say, I cannot come because I have bought a new team of oxen. I cannot come because I have married a new wife. I cannot come because I have bought a new piece of land. And the master gets angry and goes out and says, go out and bring people from the highways and the byways and bring them inside because the feast must be had. You, re you realize that the things that the people, that are causing the people not to come to the banquet feast was not bad things. A wife is not a bad thing, is it? Ah, Allah. Oh, okay. <laughs> a team of oxen is not a bad thing. The tractors of this day, those are not bad things. That's wealth, right? And land brought maguta maguta. Not bad things at all. But those were the very things that were keeping these people from the banquet feast. Not the sins. They are, they are not sins. They were the very blessings of God. Is it possible that it could be that the very blessings of God could be holding you back from the thing that you desire most in your heart? Could it be that it could be the wealth, it could be the money, it could be the relations, it could be the children, it could be the people that you love, it could be the job, your career. Is it possible that it could be your ministry that you have held on to? That is the thing that gives you an identity. And so if you let it go, you wouldn't even know who you are. And that is what God is calling us to live. That's what we are saying. It is very possible that God may challenge you or me to give to him something, to let go of something so that we can follow him and that thing he still allows another person to have it. That's why not everybody has been called to leave whatever it is that they were doing to come into full-time ministry. 
We are saying it's not sinful things. Because if we said all of you need to leave your jobs and come here to Shiloh, and now we are the pastors. Kuzi ajirenya kwa mambie pasi. Uyo sasa. Sisi wote tumeacha kenya unafanyanga, sasa umekuja hapa wewe ni pa? Pastor. Alafu sasa. No, 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 sasa. Tuko hapa sasa sisi wote tumeacha our trades, my doctors, my engineers, walimu, watu wa biashara. Ndiyo nyinyi nuwaona hapo. Mko sasa mko hapa. Tunangangania hapa sande. Siku yangu nilini? Siku yangu nilini kubiri? Siku yangu nilini? Siku yangu nilini? Tuko hapa tukama 300. Sande ni ngapi kwa mwaka? Sasa, boingine tutawubiri lini sasa. Hata bishop atawai ubiri siku gani. Hata. So, the Lord will call somebody else. It's not sinful. The Lord may call somebody else, and this is a big me, the Lord may call somebody else and ask them to leave whatever they're doing that they may follow him. That's just an example, okay? And allow the other people to be left in that field. The question is, could it be that the things that you have right now, God might be calling you to just relinquish so that he may take first place? When you look at the allocation of your time, for instance, you ask yourself, where does your time go? What do you do with your day? That's an easy question to ask yourself to try and crack this question that the young rich ruler is asking. Where does your time go? That's an easy way to be able to know what you have esteemed high or highly. Where does your time go? Ask yourself, where does your money go? Is it towards serving God? And when I say serving God, I don't mean standing here. I mean doing the things that God will have you do. I don't know whether you have made a prayer when you're in a place, in a fix, and you're saying, Jesus, please come through. Because the way things are looking right now, we need money. I need provision. And you have cried out to God. And then when you're leaving, you have met with somebody. Or just somewhere, somebody has sent you an m message. A random m message. Random. You, they didn't owe you money. Ata amuongeangi sana. Lakini yamekutumia tu. 10,000. Unanza kujuliza, as a good Christian, what should I do? Should I withdraw and pay my debt first? And then when he calls me, I'm like, oh, you're by mistake. And I'm ah, 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 me. Or should I call him and ask, brother, was that money for me? Because you me alfukumi, and then they tell you, imagine, I'm scared to ni kubariki. Have you been in a place where I'm still young, you know what, you know May the Lord charge people to just draw you. <laughs> But if you have been in that place, you know how refreshing you felt. How refreshed, eh? How refreshed you felt in that moment. Therefore, to flip the coin, on the other hand, you must be open to God now prompting you to release some of what you have to somebody else. Buona sifiwe. So that we are not, that is, that is what ministry, using our wealth for ministry looks like. That you're praying for somebody and God drops in your heart while you're praying for that person. God drops in your heart to send them something. The first thing comes when I have 5,000. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. You're trying to, in the tongues, you're trying to scale that 5,000 to the nearest five. <laughs> I'm not 500. I'm not 500. In my mind, God, remember them. God, please send somebody to send them the 5,000 that they require. That's a word of knowledge. God, I receive it today. Send somebody. I pray for the people around him. It's you. It's you. There's no other person. But me, I, me, I, don't, me, I only have one 5,000. And God knows that. Could it be possible? Just ask yourself. So where does your money go? Where does your time go? Where is your affection? That's what Jesus says to him. That if you want to be perfect, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. And then you will have treasure in heaven. Jesus reminds us that where your heart is, there your treasure also. And the other, the other way is right as well. Okay? So where is it that your affection is? Where does your time go? And where does your money go? So Jesus continues after the young man has left. Jesus now turns to his disciples, the ones who stick with him, and says to them, I say for, to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel, to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples had it, they were greatly astonished. And they're asking, who then can be saved? Why the disciples are asking that question is because in their day and age, the rich people were considered to be the good people in society. Just like in this day, have you ever gone to a place now you're waiting to be served? 
na wewe ulikuja miguu umeketishwa hapo kwa gate alafu mtu anaingia na ali gari shangingi la kifahari jeusi kwa kweli lenye miguu magurudumu maku maku unaweza kufanya hesabu hii tayari ni kitu moja nipewe tu hivi hakuna mtu anakupea wacha hiyo hesabu meketi tu hapo unajiuliza and then yeye yeah, anaruhusiwa access hata hawa msach wewe ulifrisikiwa kwa gate kama waliona terrorist mkora kweli kweli na umejaribu kuingia umepiga pasi nguo umekuja tu hapo umekuja kusaidiwa yeye yeah, anafunguliwa milango yote mbili unajua ile gate yenye gari ndogo ikikuja anafungulia ngo gate moja angangane finyana hapo boss finyana lakini mtu anafunguliwa gari kubwa unafunguliwa milango yote gates wide open ndio sat you and you sit there saying oh lord jesus remember me remember mercy i claim i receive i receive <laughs> that's just like it is in our society today even back in our in the day it used to be like that yeah so the rich people used to be considered to be the good people in society because it used to look like god has blessed them for their good god has blessed them for their kindness god has blessed them for their good deeds so that's yeah so that's why the disciples are asking these questions sasa kama hawa matajiri hawezi wakaingia he says then who then can be saved and jesus says to them with god with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible including the rich people entering heaven now there are people who may use this verse to think it is a bad thing to be rich we reject that thought in jesus name it is not scriptural okay because the lord would require the church requires wealth to move on for the gospel to reach spreading the gospel you remember the other day um uh the visitor that had visited us uh was it was his name barkley that had visitors from the states and was reminding us about um how how they use those small two machines that have translated the bible into the local languages and take them out to people that's money how the people that came from um the bible society of kenya was it and they were telling us about how much it costs to translate a bible those people require money ministry requires money where we are seated today you guys have been here when shilo used to face the other side tukainua tent jamani pesa ni si pesa si pesa tukabadilisha hivi pesa si pesa jamani tukaweka pesa there is nothing here that was donated for free and even the things that were donated like this pulpit was bought or was paid for ministry requires money so it is a beautiful thing for you people to go out and work with your hands and honor God with your wealth so that the work of the ministry can continue to grow and to flourish when you hold back your hand from giving what you're essentially doing is keeping the gospel from going further the gospel does not take itself it requires people when the people are taking the gospel they'll require a place to stop and eat and drink bona sifiwe and i'm not just talking about pastors lest you think who are not i'm talking about even you when you're going out for some kind of ministry you have to stop somewhere when you're visiting somebody we said the other day you don't just go into somebody's house and say nimekuja nimejileta mimi mwenyewe zawadi kuu zawadi nono mbarikiwa wa bwana mpakwa mafuta wa mungu pakwa mafuta kabisa lakini leta maziwa siingie tu hivyo at least kuja na kitu at least hata ndizi tu moja na tukasema an easy guide ni bring what you want to eat then. <laughs> Sintembele tu hivyo alafu unakuja. Kwa natumaji nikikuletea maji unasema eh hey, hata haizi akaletea mtu chai. Imetoka wapi chai na huku jana? <laughs> <laughs> so the disciples um said to <laughs> The disciples say to Jesus after Jesus has told them it is possible a rich man can enter the kingdom with the help of God with God a rich man that is submitted to God a rich man that has left everything and submitted it to Christ because when i have given myself to Christ even my pocket is there bwana sifiwe yani unajitoa kama sadaka kwanza such that if the lord requires this or that of you you are willing to give it Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Jamani Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. So Peter answers the question and asks Jesus, "See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? What's in it for us? What about us?" Anaambia, anasikia ameambia watu wengine. And these people remember we have said that Jesus had already done quite some ministry together with these people. They had been together for some time. By this time he's going towards his death. And so they are asking, "We have seen what you have done for the other people. We have seen those who are sick receive their healing. Those who are dead received their their dead back to life." 
Those people who are struggling, you gave them solutions. Those people, you did those things for them. Us, we have left everything and we have come to follow you. What's in it for us? And that's a question that I don't know about you, but sometimes I find myself asking, what's in it for me? Ask yourself what had the disciples left. If you read Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 to 20, we may not go into it. But the disciples had left everything. They had left their productive work to come and follow Jesus Christ. You ask yourself, what have you left behind? There's many things that you've left. The question that Peter is asking Jesus is an interesting question. It was a true question, but it was not wisely spoken. You think that what could there be that we have left behind that is of value, of higher value, compared to what Jesus Christ has already given us? It's a good question. It's a true question, rather. But it's not a wise one. And if you find yourself asking that question, I think that the, the place for us as believers is to ask the Lord to help us, to open the eyes of our understanding, that we might see the sure thing that we have in Jesus. What's in it for you, beloved? What is not in it for you? That's the question. We have been given so great a salvation. When you truly sit down with the help of the Holy Spirit, you realize we have been given far much more than we could ever have earned with our own hands. When you leave whatever you left behind so that you can follow Jesus, even the things that used to relieve, maybe you used to use things. Okay, una stress, una piga moja, una piga mbili. Una maliza, hiyo stress inaisha. Lakini una juu itakupata pale, sindio? So you go high, and then after the high is done, you come low. And then you need something to pick you up higher. And then you take that's how you end up in an endless cycle. But you say, God, I, I left those things. So you can stress too, na pambana na stress yako mnangalia na naivu kwa macho. Kwa sababu hautumi mi hadarati na vitu vingine, ulivyo kuna tumia vileo vingine, ulivyo kuna tumia. Ndiyo usahau. Hapa ndani ya Yesu unakabiliana na ana kwa ana, unangalia na shida yako hivi kwa macho. <laughs> Unajaribu kulala, unapinduka, unapinduka, unapata yendi maali. Unakiti chini, unajuliza Lord. When he kitu yendi maali, unaipata ndio hii na kuangalia hivi. Inabaki sasa unambia mungu, God please take this thing over. God please. And you know sometimes God will come and take it over at that moment. And sometimes, little by little, taking ground. So God is telling you, ah, my strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. Ajo kule kwa dunia huko unaambiwa hivyo. Ulikuwa tu shwa ukipiga moja mbili ukifanya hivi na unasahau. Unakuwa kama mtu wako uki, umepatana na watu kule kwa sherehe ama nyia mkuu mnaenda. Patana na watu uko kwa sherehe. People are just happy. Ako na mashida lakini yamesahau. Ah <laughs> like, ah bro what eh. <laughs> pewa pewa ingine, pewa ingine. Unapewa na pesa yenye hana yamefuliza ndio mpewe. Na anakunywa ndiyo asahawa na pesa. Sasa akifufuka, ajwa likuwa ni kweli ya mekufa. Akifufuka kesho wa subuhi, anamuwa na kichwa. Na hile pesa enyakuwa nayo sasa imeongezeka kwa sababu kuna kafuliza kameongezeka hapo. It can't be that those are the things we desire. Ukiketi chini ujiulize, kule ni metoka ni wapi? Unajambia, ah, I cannot ask that question. What's in it for us? What is not in it for us? We have a sure deal in Jesus Christ, beloved. Whatever it is that you left behind, it doesn't matter how well it was working at that time. If it was not for Jesus and Jesus called you to leave it behind, it was for your good. It was for my good. There was nothing, absolutely nothing that we ever dealt in the past that was better than the life we have been given right now. The apostle would remind us and say, even though on the outside our bodies are wasting away, on the inside we are daily being renewed. Iwapo inje tunachaka andani yetu tunafanyika kuwa upia. So we continue to press toward that mark of the high calling. Because what's in it for us, what is not in it for us. Tell your neighbor you have a sure thing in Christ. We have a sure thing in Christ. Jesus answers the question and said, Assuredly, I say to you, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit, speaking to the twelve disciples, will sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Two things, beloved, that he says. He says to them that everyone who has left anything for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold. You see the beauty about the kingdom is that whatever it is that is happening, whatever it is that you've left behind, God is able to make sure that right here, right now, you receive a hundredfold. The challenge is that it is not a literal 
exchange. It is not because if it were literal, then it will be if you've left your wife, you receive a hundred wives. <laughs> and who wants that? Absolutely nobody, right? It, will, it's, it seems nice if it would be like if you've left a car, you'll receive a hundred cars. Come on. But where do you take a hundred cars? Who's ever between Guinea and Stress? Me, my foot and Pesangapi. Na parking. Na insurance. Vitu ingine hata unaitisha mungu hata wewe unajua. Ukiketi chini unajua hata witaki. When you think about effective prayer, we're going to be sharing that with the men later. Thinking the, some of the things we ask for in prayer, we don't even, if you sit to actually think about what you're asking for, you don't even want it. He says a hundredfold. If, for instance, you were to receive Jesus Christ and the people in your family or your friends were to desert you and say, you have decided to follow Jesus, don't call us, don't talk to us anymore. That's okay. Because when you come into the kingdom, you receive a new family. You become of new belonging. You receive a new community. Have you received a hundredfold or have you not? You have received better. If you lost your name when you gave your life to Jesus because people did not understand the sure thing that you had in Christ, when you come into the kingdom, you receive a new name. You are now called the child of God. You are a co-heir together with Christ. What's in it for us, beloved? What is not in it for us? We have a sure thing in Christ. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you have a sure thing in Christ Jesus. Finally, he says, that you're going to get those things here and then you shall inherit eternal life. Eternity, beloved, is what the young rich ruler was looking for. And Jesus is now telling us that you who have left everything for my name's sake and you have said, Lord, be my everything, be my Lord and Savior, you receive all those things put together to the glory of God. And then in eternity, you have a sure place. We have a sure place, a sure thing in Christ. Maybe you came into the service discouraged today. Won't I remind you what you already know the day you gave your life to Jesus, that you have a sure thing in Christ. You have a place reserved, eternity together with Jesus. Just don't give up. Don't throw in the tower. Continue holding on. Continue to stand strong in the faith. Continue to trust that Jesus Christ is able to carry you to the very end. And if you're here, you've not given your life to Jesus consider that there is one thing only that God is calling you to do. He says come and follow me. That's what he said to the young rich ruler. He was not very much interested in whether he would sell those things or not. He says after you have done everything else you must come and follow me. Because what does it profit us then to sell everything and still not follow Jesus? And then what does it profit us to have everything and still not follow Jesus? So the main call that Jesus is making to him and making to us today is come and follow me. Are you here? You've never followed Jesus Christ. The call is fresh today as it was for that young man that day. Come and follow Jesus because in him you have a sure thing. Are you here and you have already followed Jesus but you're discouraged and torn and tossed about and battered and beaten and bamboozled by life? I remind you what you already know. You have a sure thing in Christ. You're looking for your hundredfold. You might be looking in the wrong place. Let the Lord do it. You just do the right thing and let him handle the rest of the things. Let the Lord be your, recompen your, your compensation. Let the Lord be your vindication. Let the Lord do the job himself. You just do what you've been called to do. Stay faithful. Follow Jesus. If you start to look at God and the way I have given, I have given, I have given, and nobody's giving to me. God, the way I have stood with people and nobody's here to stand with me. What you're looking for is the literal translation. I have given, I need to receive in the exact same way. That is not God's mathematics. You will give in this way. God will give you in ways you have never. You are giving and you're expecting that you're going to receive money, 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 money. Sometimes we ask God for money, but is that your real need? You want money so that you can go and do something with that money. Your real need is what you want to go and do. How about if you gave money and God decides, instead of you getting that money, let me attend to that need for you. Amen. What is your real need? It says, make your requests known to God. Our request has never been today or ever money. Never. Why, why do you need the money? That is not your real, your real need. Money is your means to attend to your real need. I'm not saying money is a bad thing because it is a means to attend to your real need. But how about if we decided to let God know our real needs? So that we are not looking for, I gave this, I'm waiting for my reward. My hundredfold reward, come now. Come now, my hundredfold reward. Because when it doesn't come, you will be disappointed. You loved somebody, you took care of somebody's son or somebody's daughter, and they are not honoring you. You're wondering, God, why is that? Why are they not giving me that return? 
leave it alone. You do what the Lord called you to do. Because in this life, a hundredfold. Let the Lord handle the hundredfold. You don't know where it's going to come. Maybe you're living longer. The Lord is increasing your days just because of those things you did. You're not being given what you gave, but the Lord is a debtor to no man. That's another principle that you can take to the bank. Are you here discouraged? I remind you one last time, you have a sure thing in Christ. You have a sure thing in Christ. If your question is, God, what is in it for me? Now that I have been a believer all these years, I have fasted, I have prayed, I have trusted you, I am waiting on you, and there are things that you're not doing. Consider, beloved, you still have a sure thing in Christ. God is a debtor to no man. And you still, your payment is still not complete. In the end, when all this gig is folded up, in the very end, when the trumpet is sounded, you have a place in eternity together with Jesus Christ. May the Lord help us. May the Lord remind us. May the Lord change our hearts that will not be like that young rich ruler. That will not turn away disappointed from God every time when God does not do the things we require of him or we desire from him. But that we will be so content in knowing I have given to God freely and I know God is a debtor to no man. However he will choose to do it, he is going to do it. However he is going to sort me out, he is going to sort me out. All I know is that he is going to sort me out. Because God... His principle is that he is a debtor to no man. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you today because you are faithful and true. We thank you because of your word today, Lord Jesus, that you've reminded us that, Lord Jesus Christ, you are a debtor to no man. We pray that you will stir our hearts up to remember that, that, Lord, we will continue to come and follow you, that we will put away everything that takes first place in our lives and that we will come and follow you. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, for those that may be here and have not yet accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray that you would remind them today that there is a place in you for them. In the name of Jesus. Throughout this week, I pray that, Lord, you would challenge us to put everything else aside and to come and follow you. Because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.